Hello, New York Giants fans. Welcome back to Everything New York Giants. I'm your host, Adriana, also known as New York Giants Fangirl on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And today is Monday. That means that the NFL season is officially over and we are on to the 2024 season. So now is where there's going to be a lot of speculation. It's draft talk all the time until we get to free agency on March 13th. Until then, we're talking about draft picks. So I want to start by saying that this is what we're going to be doing moving forward from now until the draft. So every week I'm going to have a new podcast episode. It'll be about 20 minutes and we're going to talk about the top five to 10 players in every position. So today we're going to focus on quarterbacks. Next week we'll talk about wide receivers and every week from here on out. I'm also working on getting some guests on. I have one lined up that I'm really excited about so far. That will be a separate episode, so I'll keep you guys posted when that is ready to go live and you can listen. In the meantime, let's get into it. It's time to talk about draft picks. So we're going to start, of course, with Caleb Williams. Now, here's what you can expect when I talk about every player. I'm going to preface this by saying, you guys all know this, I am not an NFL scout, okay? So I took my information from Bleacher Report, from PFF, from NFL Draft Buzz. So I'm really focusing on some of the strengths and weaknesses, the positive and negatives of each quarterback. So we'll go through, you know, size, positive negatives, stats, and then my opinion on each player and who I think would be a good fit for the Giants. You guys let me know in the comments on YouTube what you think, and we'll go from there. So again, with guys like Caleb Williams, Drake May, and Jaden Daniels, I'm not going to talk a ton about them because it's, as the days goes on, it's seeming like it's less likely that we're going to have a shot at any one of them. So let's start with Caleb Williams. I feel like everyone knows everything about him. He's 6'2", 200, or sorry, excuse me, 6'1", 215 pounds from obviously University of Southern California. Now, some positives with Caleb. Great arm talent, we all know that. That's probably the one thing that everyone's talked about when it comes to Caleb, is that he throws with good velocity and he can manipulate the ball's flight to make any throw. And if you've watched Caleb Williams, you've seen that excellent, excellent when it comes to that. Rare ability to throw off platform and on the move, something that if he were drafted to the Giants, he would probably have to do quite often. Great accuracy on all three levels. Again, something that Giants quarterbacks have been, you know, kind of hit or miss on, I would say, over the last few years or so. Can offer wonderful touch placement when needed. He has elite patience and vision as a playmaker. Above average processing skills. Again, something that I think we all agree we would like to see from our new quarterback. Um, and he handles the USC's offense quite well. He's an above average athlete, flexible mover. So again, all really good things when you hear about Caleb Williams. But of course, like everyone, he is not perfect. So let's talk about some negatives. Below average height for the position at 6'1", still a good height. But obviously, some of the other quarterbacks we've seen more closer to 6'4", 6'5", you know, are being raved about when it comes to that thing. Footwork can make him late with on-schedule throws, often drops back square to the line of scrimmage and needs extra steps to gather himself. Now, that could be a problem if he's drafted to the Giants and our offensive line is not holding up well. Um, he's aggressive to a fault as a playmaker at times. Again, this is a complaint that we've probably all had about Daniel Jones is forcing throws when it's not there. Um, so listen, I think we all agree Caleb's a great option. Is he going to fall to us? Probably not. In the likelihood that the Giants end up trading down with the um, the Bears and end up picking him number one overall, I think a lot of Giants fans would love it. I would say the biggest concern that I have for him is not being able to handle the New York media. Um, I, you know, I've seen him be upset after games, which is fine. You're allowed to be upset. I have seen a ton of NFL players be upset. I think it's fine. It's okay to show emotions. What I don't like is the fact that he was trying to hide it. And, you know, he had like a piece of paper in front of him and his mom. And I just, things like that, I just think are not going to go over well in New York. And I think that if you want to play in New York, you have to be prepared for that, regardless of how good or bad of a player you are. So that's something that I'm concerned with. Now, again, he's going to have media training. He's going to have PR help, all of that kind of thing. Is that going to help? Maybe. I think at the end of the day, a lot of us have a hard time controlling our emotions. And I don't know, you know, that however much media training you have, like, is that really going to help you overcome that? I'm not so sure. Um, so again, not my top favorite for the Giants. 
there are some better options in my opinion that I like, but I do think if he was drafted, I would embrace it and be happy that, you know, we have an elite arm thrower coming our way. So his stats for 2023 in 12 games, he um, had a 68.6 completion percentage through for 3,600 yards, um, 9.4 yards was the average, three touchdowns, five interceptions, great ratio there, um, 142 yards and 11 touchdowns. So I think we all know, again, what Caleb Williams is. He's a great option. Next, let's talk about Drake May from the University of North Carolina, 6'4", 230. Again, he's a guy that is probably not going to make it to us, but we do know that the Giants are very fond of him and they do like him. So I kind of feel like if they trade down for anyone, in my opinion, it would be Drake May instead of Caleb Williams, but who knows? Good athletic ability. He's quick for a size, good speed to threaten def uh, defenses as a scrambler and designed runner. Something that would fit this offense quite well. Very good arm strength, throws with tons of velocity outside the numbers and down the field. Again, these are all really great things that you want out of your quarterback. There's a reason why these guys are ranked number one and number two overall. Great ability to throw off platform and under pressure. Again, something that we know until this offensive line is fixed, these guys have to be calm, cool, and collect under pressure. Can rip it when the pocket is cluttered or when he's on the move. I, I think that's something that I would also really like to see is someone who can throw the ball across the body on the move quite well. And, you know, we haven't really seen a lot of that from Jones. Great accuracy, throws well to all three levels and shows flashes of special touch. Above average ability to operate within structure, plays on time and knows how to get to the check down. Um, I also believe that he knows how to get past the check down, which is, again, Something I think we'd all like out of our quarterback. Some negatives. Tendencies to make bad plays worse. Will run into bad sacks or throw head-scratching interceptions trying to save a play. That sounds familiar. Now, my question with all of this is, as with someone with that type of problem like Drake May, is there the possibility that that's something that can be improved upon or potentially fixed coming in as a young draft pick with good coaches and talent around him? Possibly. I kind of feel like Daniel Jones never had that opportunity and that was not something that he was able to improve upon. So you've got Drake May coming into the same organization, but with a completely different offensive coaching staff, um, front office, everything that hopefully, you know, they're going to do everything to help him succeed. So again, that's a concern, no doubt, but is it something that he can improve upon? I hope so. He can struggle to come off his pre-snap read when the picture changes on him post-snap. Now, again, something we've all talked about with Daniel Jones is the struggle there to get past the read. So, again, you know, some of the, the negatives that you hear about Drake May sound familiar to Daniel Jones. However, his positives are obviously a lot higher than Daniel Jones and what they were at the time and, you know, his um, talent and skills and stuff like that. I wouldn't compare the positive there to Jones. I think, obviously, we all agree that May has more than that. Um, but the negatives are sounding a little similar. 2023 stats in 12 games, he had a 63.3 percentage um, completion rate, 3,600 yards, eight and a half yards per attempt, 24 touchdowns, nine interceptions, so a little bit higher there than Williams, although Williams did have a bit of a fumbling problem that it seems like um, Drake May might not have to the extent that Caleb Williams has. Um, 449 yards and nine touchdowns. So now let's talk about Jaden Daniels, who I think there is a possibility that he's going to make it to us at six. I really hope. And, I mean, as the days go on, like I said, it's not looking so good, but you never know. So he's 6'4", 210 pounds, positive. Elite athleticism. If you've watched him play, you've seen this before. Excellent burst, agility, and speed for the position. Above average pocket management and toughness. Again, something that you got to have out of your quarterback. Very important. Above average process within the pockets. Now, again, any quarterback that gets drafted to the Giants until this O-line gets figured out, they're going to have to get through their reads really quickly and be able to process quickly. And again, that has been detrimental to Daniel Jones because it's something that he struggled with. So if something like Jaden Daniels comes in and he's able to do that, he's going to be able to manipulate the pocket a little bit better than Jones has been able to do. Um, good ability to create. He's a dangerous runner. Again, if you've watched him play, you've seen that he's fast as hell. With sparse flashes of creativity as a thrower outside the pocket. Very good deep ball accuracy. Consistently drops it in the bucket. God, could you imagine him with Jalen Hyatt? Oh, would be incredible. 
Now let's talk about a couple of negatives here. Skinny frame with a reckless abandon as a ball carrier opens himself up to future injury. A question that I have is whatever team he gets drafted to, will they try to get him to put on some weight because he is quite lean. Mediocre velocity can sometimes struggle driving the ball into tight windows. Obviously, you know, that could definitely be a concern as well as this inconsistent accuracy to the short and immediate areas, especially if not throwing on time. And again, we all know that the throwing on time thing as a result of this offensive line could be an issue. His 2023 stats in 12 games, he had a 72 2.2% completion rate, 3,800 yards, 11.7 yards per average, 40 touchdowns to four interceptions. He is a guy that protects the ball. Very impressive, very important. Um, 1,100 yards and 10 touchdowns. So Jaden Daniels is a guy that I love. Again, I, I don't really think he's going to be there at six, but if we could get him, I would take him in a heartbeat. Now, those are the guys that obviously we all know are going to go top 10, probably top five, if not top three. But some of the other guys that we're going to talk about now are probably mid to late first rounder. And then we're going to get into some th second and third round options. Now, the assumption, obviously, the Giants are drafting a quarterback. The question is when. So I think it's important that we go through all of these guys. So when it comes to draft night, everyone has a little bit of familiarity with them. I know everyone probably already knows who Bo Nix is. We're going to talk about him next. From Oregon, 6'2", 218 pounds, the positives. Very good athlete, explosive short area move shows good speed in the open field. Again, part of this offense, whoever the quarterback is, they're going to be asked to run. And for him to be able to do that shows good speed in the open field. Necessity. Good creation ability outside the pocket, willing to break structure, plays with his eyes downfield. Again, this has been a complaint. I know we all know this for a lot of the quarterbacks that they can't get past the reads and they can't see the ball downfield. So that automatically I think is great. For Bo Nix, functional accuracy shows the ability to layer throws, has very good arm strength, something that I don't think you can really teach. Consistently drives the ball into tight windows, both over the middle and outside the numbers. So Bo Nix has a lot of positives, especially, you know, for a guy that's not going to go top 10, top 15 that we think that we could get in later round one. Um, now let's talk about the negative. So Oregon did not ask a lot of him as a processor. I'm going to get into this when we talk about J.J. McCarthy. Tons of screens, RPOs, and simple vertical concepts. Now, in the current offense with Mike Kafka possibly um, calling the plays, it sounds like... I mean, it kind of sounds like that's what the Giants offense been, except that we have zero screen game. Um, but, you know, I think with any rookie quarterback coming in, it's probably they're going to start slow and then work their way up to things, especially depending on how the line is. Inconsistent drop back footwork too often disrupts his timing when working real drop back passing concepts. Footwork can probably be worked on a little bit, but um, I think if they can work on the inconsistent part of it, could be something that could eventually be turned into a strength with him. Below average ability to find answers within structure when first read is taken away. So definitely a concern now, of course, the hope is that we're going to bring in another wide receiver. We're going to have a better running game and the offensive line is going to be better that, you know, hopefully he's going to have a little bit more time to process and be able to kind of move on the run and make changes as he goes. Inconsistent toughness in the pocket shows good flashes, but too often falls away from throws. So, you know, some Something that makes quarterbacks elite versus not elite um, is being able to make those types of throws. So, again, we'll see. Um, let's talk about his stats. 14 games played, 77.4% completion, uh, 4,500 yards, 9.6 yards per average, 45 touchdowns, three interceptions. Again, another guy that does a really good job of um, ball security. We all know the importance of that. 234 yards and six touchdowns rushing. So Nix is going to be a good option, and so is Michael Penix, who we're going to talk about now. Obviously, the biggest concern about Penix, um, the Washington quarterback who's 6'2", 212, is that he has had two torn ACLs already. So, um, you know, the other concern at that is he's a lefty quarterback. His blind side is going to be right tackle, and, you know, we all know what the right tackle <laughs> situation is right now, concerning at the least. So, um you know, we'll see. Like I said, I think that he's a good option. I think the injuries are going to be something that could potentially deter the Giants from picking him. His positives, great arm strength, drives the ball on a line with velocity, both down the field and into tight windows. 
good deep ball accuracy. Again, I just like, when you hear that, I just, all I can think about is Jalen Hyatt. And obviously Darius Leighton is going to be here next year, but Jalen Hyatt is the future. And to just know that whoever we bring in at quarterback is going to be able to have great deep ball throws is something that, you know, we have not really seen a lot of over the last couple of years. Consistently drops it in the bucket or at worst presents a winnable jump ball situation. So let's get us a wide receiver here who can make contested catches. Aggressive mentality, willing to attack tight windows and give his players chances in the air. I like that. We have to trust the players though. Shows the ability to progress across the field and handle real NFL concepts. Functional athleticism can tuck it and run for efficient gains from time to time. Something he's going to be asked to do in the Giants offense if he's drafted here. Negative. So he's a one-speed thrower, can only throw line drives, struggles to add arc and touch to the ball. So that can be a little bit of a concern, especially for someone who we're probably going, he's going to be asked to be able to throw a deep ball and stuff like that. Below average accuracy to the intermediate area, lack of touch hurts him. Um, my biggest, that's something that I'm a little bit concerned of. This is my biggest concern with him. Poor responses to pressure often struggles to throw with bodies around him in the pocket. That's a concern in the NFL. So I think we saw some of that in the Washington, um, whatever final game they made it to in the college playoffs. I think we saw some of that. So, you know, in the NFL, it's going to be tenfold. So definitely a little concern there. Flashes NFL progression ability, but too often triggers a beat late definitely will be an issue in the pros. So something to watch for. Again, um, like I said, I think he's a good option. I just think that the injuries is probably going to be the biggest concern for the Giants. So his 2023 stats in 14 games played, he had a 66.7% completion rate, 4,600 yards, 9.2 yards per average, 35 touchdowns, nine interceptions. Again, good rate there. Um, 13 yards and three touchdowns. So not a huge runner. He didn't do a ton of running, especially when you compare him to someone like Jaden Daniels. So I would say that in this type of offense, I think that that could be a little bit of a concern too. Let's talk about JJ McCarthy, who is my least favorite quarterback on this list of all. And this, this is my biggest concern about JJ McCarthy. If JJ McCarthy was such a gunslinging, accurate, talented arm, incredible passer, why didn't we see more of that? Okay. I watched Michigan football more than I ever have this year. And I lost bets because this fucker was told that he's the gunslinging, passing pro expert over here. And he threw around 20, 20, or around 22 attempts per game. So here's my problem. If he's so incredible at all of that, why the hell are you not letting him throw the ball more? Why is Jim Harbaugh out here saying, oh, I think he should be the first quarterback taken off the board? You do? Really? Stop it. I understand that Michigan has a good run game, but still, if he's that good, why are you not using him to his fullest potential? He's going to have to come to the NFL and be able to throw the ball. And if he's going to get drafted to the Giants, newsflash, we don't have a great run game. So he's going to be forced to throw the ball. And if he doesn't really have a great track record of it and he's only attempting 22 times per game, I don't feel the most confident that he's going to come in here and sling the ball around successfully. So he is not my first choice. <laughs> or my, he would be my last choice, honestly. 6'3", 202 pounds. Here's his positives. Above average quickness and agility, nimble mover in and out of the pocket, which is, we know, going to be an important for any Giants quarterback. Flash's ability to create from the outside the pocket. Above average accuracy when throwing the middle of the field, such as slants, glance routes, and digs. All important things. He has great positive. There's no doubt about that. But I want to see it. Okay? I want to see it with my own two eyes. And I didn't. Above average toughness in the pocket, willing to take hits to get the ball out. Uh, kids going to have to take a lot of hits. So um, it's interesting that I find that as a positive because then this is the first negative as I was doing this research on him. Skinny sub 205 pound built that will invite injuries. So that is a concern for anyone on the Giants, much less the quarterback. One speed thrower with average arm talent. Mm, that's not what Jim Harbaugh says. Often fails to add arc and touch when necessary, especially outside the numbers. Below average ability to throw late in the down or from uncomfortable platforms. Concern, again, with this offensive line, 
That's the type of stuff that you're probably going to be doing more often than not. Another concern here, below average processing and timing on anything but his first read. And if that doesn't sound like Daniel Jones, I don't know what does. Stats in 14 games played, he had a 73.2% um, accuracy rate, 2,800 yards. Like I said, nothing compared to those other guys. Um, 22 TDs, four interceptions, uh, 171 yards rushing, and three TDs. So again, he's not going to be that guy that is, you know, going to be, I don't think, decisive when if the read's not there to take the ball and run. And that, you know, we all know it's going to be important in this Giants offense. Moving along, I think I'm already 20 minutes in, so I got to go faster here. Okay, Michael Pratt, Tulane, 6'3", 220 positives, has enough arm strength to stay on schedule on short and immediate timeline throws, keeps his eyes up and active when extending, and keeps his shoulders level off platform. Very important. I love that about him. Um, knows how to use eye manipulation to draw DBs out of zones and open throwing lanes, something that we haven't seen from a Giants quarterback in years. Um, a steady decision maker who take who takes what's given, minimizing the risk-reward balance. The biggest thing that I think is going to be one of the most important skills, talents, qualities that a Giants quarterback is going to have to have is being a quick decision maker. So I like that about Michael Pratt. Some of his negatives. Visibly lacks elite arm strength, needing considerable strain to drive velocity downfield. Now, again, when we talk about guys like Jalen Hyatt, like this, I hope, is going to be a huge part of the Giants game, and that could be a concern there. Lacks great change of direction and burst as an athlete and relies on toughness. Doesn't have the athleticism to remain a plus rushing threat against NFL caliber talent. Again, concern for this offense. Next up, let's talk about Spencer Rattler. I'm a University of South Carolina alum. Spencer went to the University of South Carolina, so him and I have a little connection from that. He's 6'1", 218. Now, he started at Oklahoma and then he transferred to USC. Some of his strengths has near elite composite arm talent with high end arm strength and angle freedom, generally accurate quarterback who can effectively lead short and intermediate wide receivers for run after the catch. Love to hear it. Has the poise to stand in the middle of the pocket and rifle passes to the middle with pressure coming. Poise in the pocket. Enough said. Has shown progress through reads and anticipate root breaks in succession has generally good discretion and check down awareness as a decision maker. Again, important things that these quarterbacks have to have. Negatives is a smooth and nimble short area mover, but doesn't have elite burst or speed. So again, you're talking about someone who is obviously, we're out of the first round now, Spencer Rattler is likely to be probably end of second round, maybe early third, but he's a guy that has the potential, right, to improve. So something that we'll be looking at. Doesn't have the raw creation ability to be a consistent rushing threat in an offense. Obviously a little bit of a concern there. And here's another concern that I have about him. I'm sure you guys will all agree with this. Will at times force throws to covered receivers when encountering interior pressure. So again, it's something that, you know, if the Giants pl plan on bringing in a quarterback later, round two, round three, whatever, something that they plan to improve upon, because obviously that's going to be extremely important. All right, we have two more. Um, next up is Jordan Travis from Florida State. He is 6'1", 12 hyper elite, elite, creator and running threat with devastating burst, twitch, and lateral agility. Arm is exceptionally elastic and can sustain, can sustain velocity from multitude of launch angles. Love this next bullet. Flashes good off script vision and equilibrium when forced to roll out under pressure, something that's going to be really important. Again, beating a dead horse here, you guys know this. Can use subtle bouts of eye manipulation to displace linebackers and open the middle of the field. Again, two things that I really love about Jordan Travis are those last two bullets I think are great. Negatives. On occasion, sudden pressure can cause Travis to panic and force unideal throws. Don't love that. Definitely a concern. He's obviously not the only quarterback who does that, but something that's going to have to be improved on. You guys are not going to like this next one. Has improved at reducing fumbles, but still experiences lapses in ball security. Now, we all saw Daniel Jones improved upon that, but, you know, you're getting the NFL is just a different breed than it comes to college. And the way that this poor potential quarterback is going to get a beat down, that concerns me. 
um, could be quicker to anticipate breaks on short hitches, curls, and slants. So, you know, coming from a team that doesn't have a great screen game to begin with, um, I would like him to get the ball out quicker. We all agree that any quarterback, we would like them to get the ball out quicker um, based on what we've seen in the last couple of years. Last up, Joe Milton from Tennessee, 6'5", 235 pounds. He is a guy that did quite well at the Senior Bowl, and he, I think his draft stock is going to continue to rise. So keep your eyes peeled on him. He, I think he's projected like third round, but I wonder if he will drop down into the second, just if he continues to do as well as he does during the combine, etc. Positives. Possesses a rocket launcher for an arm and can generate effortless high level velocity. Who doesn't love that? I really like this next one too. Built like a tight end with a linear burst and physicality to create yards in open space. One thing that I like about hearing that he's built like a tight end, obviously he's 6'5", 235 pounds, is he's going to be able to take hits and, you know, that's important. Flash is good poise in the pocket. Again, very important. A willingness to stand tall and wait for windows. I like that it sounds like he's one of those quarterbacks who is not forcing plays. He's standing there calm, trying to find the right move, and then will throw it away if necessary. Has a degree of general accuracy in the intermediate range, reliably hitting the torso. Well, wouldn't that be nice <laughs> to see that on a regular basis? His negatives, not autonomous with pre and post snap reads and will forced predetermined decisions. So again, stuff that has to be worked on. Like I said, none of these guys are perfect. And I believe in our coaching staff. Shay Tierney has done an excellent job with someone like Tommy DeVito. So I think that, you know, they're going to be able to help some of these issues with some of these younger guys. Eyes are often static on initial reads and fail to manipulate defensive looks something that we've heard some of the other, other quarterbacks are better at this, can be quick to scramble out of pressure when threatened within, sorry, can be quick to scramble out of the pocket when threatened with interior pressure. So again, something that can potentially be worked on. So a lot of quarterbacks to choose from. Obviously, it's going to be very interesting where the Giants go with this. They have plenty of options. That's for sure. We'll see what happens at six. We'll see if they trade down. Let me know in the comments on YouTube what you guys think, who your favorite quarterback is. And make sure you rate, review, and subscribe because it is draft time all the time from here on out. So thanks for listening. I'll see you next week.